Will Granary Plus ever end? Will there ever be a digital specific photo section? Is he willing to hashtag free the nipple for artistic reasons on Granary? All right, so the number one question that I got, over 130 people asked, when is the iOS app coming out? Okay. Um, there is... What's going on, everybody? We have a special guest for an interview. The first time I've ever interviewed someone on this channel. Kyle from Granary, hailing from New York City on the opposite coast of where we're at. Started photography when he was 13 years old with a Ninja Turtle film camera, which is one of the best origin stories I've ever heard. Kyle, how are you doing? Good, good. I'm, I'm thrilled to be out here. Um, it's, it's super exciting to see how the platform's grown and evolved. And I'm just like, I'm still shocked that everyone is, is so excited to, to see and talk to me. All right, so let's get into the thick of things. Granary, how did it start? How long has it been around? What was the motivation into making this? Uh, yeah, so uh, basically two years ago, I was still living in New York City. And that was when COVID really started to, to hit there. And I was basically living out of my tiny apartment there and trapped at home. I wasn't doing as much photography as I really wanted to. And I had just kind of came back to, to film after, after a pause. And I was about to start this project. And when the lockdown hit, I basically like all of the, the photography gigs I had lined up, like a few grand worth of jobs just evaporated. What's next if this isn't like uh, you know, a safe thing for me. Basically, I was looking at other platforms that I was consuming content on, and I really enjoyed, um, you know, seeing other people's work because it inspired me to kind of get back into film. I would go to uh, the R Analog Reddit, and uh, yeah. what I loved about that was being able to kind of see, okay, this is this person's taking uh, a shot with this camera using this film, and it kind of inspired me to say like. Okay, if I go take uh, Ektar, for example, and go out and I shoot a scene with similar colors, this is what I can kind of expect and I can pre-visualize that. Basically, I was just kind of lamenting how the platforms we were on currently with a bunch of, of friends didn't kind of tailor to, to us and we felt like it was lacking. It was like, can we take like the best of this one, the best of this one and, and put it all into one? What would that look like? And back then I didn't know how to I didn't know how to code. I, I can make like, I could do HTML and CSS. Basically just watched a YouTube video to start out with, like how to build um, something clone. And, uh, and from there, it just kind of just snowballed uh, week after week, month after month. It was a passion project that turned into like something real. All right, so Granary is four months old now. And we've seen some big players roll up onto your platform. And with that came a huge influx of users that brought in a lot of new people so what were you feeling like should i do this full time or what what was what was going through your head yeah basically that that really started i want to say not even a month into the platform being live and i was as shocked as everyone else like i i have a, a group of friends in a film photography group chat on instagram and they would just like ping me and say like so and so's made a, a video or, or this person posted and i was i, I was blown away frankly I, I was not expecting the response but i guess it just kind of shows how much this was something that everyone wanted caleb from bad flash this was one of the the first people that i that i saw on there that uh that reached out to me and i was i was super thrilled it wasn't until uh, actually, Joe Greer. Uh, oh, of course. <laughs> of course it was Joe. <laughs> when, when Joe uh, made uh, an initial post, I just saw that everything spike, and I'm like, ah, oh, this is it. And thankfully, w the way I had constructed and built Granary, it was built for scalability. So it's not like the whole, you know, one person post and it's going to take the whole website down. So, so I was good in that respect, but I saw my prices also spike too. Once I saw the initial spike, like the, the Reddit post, the first day uh, got me like 700 users. I thought I was going to have like 50, you know, yeah. after a month, I might have 120 or something like that. And I didn't realize I was on the free tier for that. And it capped out at a hundred. I blew through that in the first hour and I was like, Oh, okay. This is this is real. I need I need to. This isn't just a passion project anymore. Like it still is, but I need to to invest more time in that. So I'm doing all of this after work. I have nine to five that I work, and then I like I try and cram in as much granary stuff after that. And I'm nights and weekends basically is is my life. But thankfully things have gotten to a place now where it's. I'm more comfortable, and I can basically make the decision that I'm going to do this full time. So. I'm pretty excited. Okay, so you've been doing film photography for what, 10 years you said? Uh, film 
On and off for, for about 10, yeah. Film on and off for 10 years. Why did you feel like there was, why did you want to put so much emphasis in making a community specifically for film photographers when there was already some homes for them, like a little pocket on Instagram, there was the subreddit r slash analog. Why did you feel that there was a huge emphasis on this? For me, I never want to stop learning. Uh, you know, going to school uh, after, after school, I always enjoyed picking up new things. That's why I wanted to code. Um, that's why I like shooting film. And I, I don't know, for me, film photography just has that extra bit of consequence uh, to it that puts you in a in a very like dedicated moment where you're you know when I shoot digital I'm not so much uh, fully thinking out my scene I'm not worried about the full composition it's making judgment calls based on you know the software intrinsic to it and it's spitting out a result and I'm in a different mindset when I'm, when I'm shooting film just because there is that long process to it. There is, you know, just the initial hit of purchasing the film, loading it, um, you know, taking your shots, uh, develop it, developing it yourself or sending it off. That's a long process to, to come away with only a handful of images. And for digital, you know, you can blast through a ton in a day. Like I'd go out with, uh, with my camera, and I'm a Fuji shooter. Mm, um, okay, to, yeah. <laughs> we'll get into that. <laughs> um, and and I'd, I'd go out and I'd come back with a ton of images and I'd just review them at the end of the day. And yeah, you did the same thing back in the day with a contact sheet, but it just made sense to kind of compress that learning curve down a bit. I guess the, the reason to focus on film was because with digital you can shoot and then review it right away. For me, the making the, the platform geared towards film, film specific, was more so because I felt like it could make the make it cheaper for people too. Like basically, you learn by by example. You learn by doing and and through absorb absorption. So if you're seeing a lot of content and you go out and you do that and you practice, maybe that learning curve is now compressed because you're exposed to more. So in that respect, maybe it saves people money because they're not blowing shots. They're not. Um, they're able to figure out what's wrong and they don't get that horrible email or call from the lab that says uh, We didn't get anything back from that role. <laughs> We've all been there or, or you know You can see that someone took a specific shot and they pulled it by a stop how that affected the image quality That kind of stuff like isn't available anywhere else. Could I? add that in and, and frankly it, it, it's super helpful when when people will share that knowledge so you're a fuji shooter i am what is the fuji film camera that you own uh so i started i've owned nearly every camera by now but i started with an xt1 um that i absolutely loved i did a lot of street photography when i was in new york oh there you go um i sold that and i got an x100 f so i just want to make it clear that i'm not a fuji film hater like not at all it's a great camera the the simulations that you can get out of it makes photography fun for people who are either a getting started or b who are just fans of like film photography but don't want to really you know spend the check for it so this makes it interesting because i'm not a fujifilm hater but there are some people who are on greenery who are hardcore haters of fujifilm shooters and who wants to be present on the film photography community that is greenery so i want to ask you this you being a Fuji shooter and having to make the tough decision that for now we will only be serving film photographers. Walk me through like why you didn't want to have them on originally. Do you have any intention to have them on? Not just Fuji film shooters, but digital people in general. Yeah, uh, I think the original intention was just to put a strong emphasis and strong focus on the individual image. As Instagram kind of changed their metrics and, and what they wanted to promote on the platform in order to drive engagement and whatnot, you know, we saw the big promotion, the heavy promotion of carousels. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sure, maybe you get more impressions if you post uh, a post with 10 images in it, but how many people actually scroll to, to post seven through 10? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that felt a little disappointing for me if I'm a film shooter that I'm throwing a whole bunch of images out there just to be seen, but then not everyone is seeing everything that I'm putting out, that seemed a little frustrating. So it was kind of the, the focus to 
the singular image. Uh. And in that respect, uh, I think that was kind of what made, you know, the decision for it to just be film uh, was that I I'm focusing on more of a niche community, a smaller community just to start out with because I'm just one person, right? right? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to build this platform up uh, in a matter of months to compete with billion dollar competitors. It's, it's a difficult thing for me to do and I'm also trying to do it in a way that's vastly different from the business model of other platforms like say Instagram. They make money by through ad revenue. They can allow you to post as many images as possible. You can throw videos up and, what, and whatnot because their revenue stream is driven by you just being on the platform and scrolling through and seeing ads. Can I change that and have it to be a, a healthier, happier uh, platform? And if I'm not collecting ad revenue, how do we actually pay for the entire platform? So that was the real struggle. Um, and I, I said from the beginning, I, I wanted to change the landscape and have it be an ad-free platform that was supported by a subscription that was as low as possible because I don't have a ton of overhead, it's just me. I need to pay for you know, my food, my rent, and, uh, and the servers, essentially. So if it's just those things, can I keep it really low? And I set things about as aggressively as I can possibly do at like $3 a month. But for anyone who goes on the platform, you're welcome to post. Um, it will be 36 images when we're launched. Right now, during the beta, I've been scaling it up. It's at 24 images right now. So you have this, what may be considered a trial period, but realistically, you can continue to use the platform once you get to 24. It's not like you're locked out. You can continue to engage with people, reach out. If you want to delete a post, post something new so you continue engaging, you're more than welcome to do that, but there is, certain inherent costs to every image that goes on the platform. There's e inherent cost to every user on the platform. So my thought was, you know, with film, because we're such a close, tight-knit uh, community, I can focus on a smaller group and see if this concept that I had of an ad-free platform is even viable, or am I just gonna go broke in a couple months? Thankfully, as of right now, it, like I'm, just to a point where it, it is making sense and uh, I'm not going to you know, be homeless. But, uh, but yeah, if, if this user base that we have now of film photographers expands to a massive amount of digital photographers and they don't, maybe they don't engage in the platform in, in the way that, that uh, I think they might or they might not connect until things are at a good place. That's just a lot of cost going out without additional revenue coming in. So the film focus was really, let's make sure that this model works and then let's go from there. So I'm, there's no animosity towards film photography and uh, towards digital photography. And frankly, the digital photos that did go up on Granary, a lot of them were fantastic. So, you know, I, I felt bad, but. All right, so for some of us who clearly don't understand the business, of running such a platform, social media, whatever. Can you explain to us in like, probably like the most layman or simplified terms of like how much cost goes into this? Yeah, um, obviously one of the big uh, things and the reason why some of the platforms that we use either restrict the size of your images or compress them a lot is because of the inherent cost in storing photos. So that's gonna be number one, a, a big hit for me um, because geez, there's already some 150, 200,000 photos on Greenery. Um, there's 30,000 plus users already just this early. Congratulations. So, thank you. Uh, so yeah, basically when someone posts something, when someone uses a search engine, which is really powerful, and frankly I had to scale it back because there was a lot of features I wasn't using, but I saw those costs go from like, okay, it was $100 in month one and two, and then it jumped to $1,400 by month three, and I'm like, okay, I need a new solution for that. Yeah, I mean, like, to make a quality app, there's a cost for that quality, and, like, for a lot of us, like, back at home, we don't really, like, understand what goes into this, because we're just used to, like, the corporations doing their thing, having, like, angel investors 
pulling into everything, which is why Granary Plus makes sense, right? We're like supporting you so that the platform can keep running. And that's like a thing that like all film people are used to by now. We just have to <laughs> support our people so that we can like have what we want. I'm hoping people see it more as like a Patreon like ah, yeah. in support of, of me and the platform I built than like as a company. Cause I, I don't want it to, I don't want it to feel too rigid and, right. and, and structured. And I just want to see it live on. And the hope is that like, okay, this I've priced things good um, at this level where if there's the right amount of users um, that it supports the entire platform. And so far it looks like I've might have got it right. And I hate to sound like an email, but like circling back to like one of the things that you said earlier about the focus on the singular photo, trying to eliminate the scroll fever that a lot of us are like pretty much trained to be because like companies like Facebook, Instagram, they have billion dollar teams behind them, psychologists, engineers, marketing teams, whatever to make the platform as addictive as possible. And I saw on one of like your older stories that you wanted to try to eliminate that. But I know that that's an incredibly hard task and how how do you envision trying to make Granary break away from that? I'm not, uh, you know, a PhD uh, psychologist. I, I don't, it wasn't ever my study to figure out how to kind of hack people's brains to get them to scroll faster and consume content quicker. So my goals for the platform are different than another, you know, social media's goals because I don't care how long your session time is. What I value is how much you get out of the uh, of your time on there. And frankly, you know, it, if you spend a shorter time on Greener, it saves me money. But it, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so so for me, uh, I'm really trying to strike a good balance in terms of, uh, you know, a storytelling element and communication and feedback because. You know, if if someone just gets like a, a ton of fire emojis and uh, like hell yeah and whatnot, like what does that actually mean at the end of the day? So it's trying to remap these interactions so it's more uh, I would say more personal and and there's more of a connection to the community because at the end of the day we are all a, a community, be it yeah. film or the much larger photography community. So. Uh, like I said, there's going to be some trial and error. I'm, I'm going to be looking into ways to, you know, highlight comments or find ways to, uh, for people to express why they like an image. Um, and yeah, stuff like double tapping to, to like a post. Sure, that's great from a, a user experience thing in terms of like being able to quickly uh, interact. But are you actually c consuming that content or did you just look at it for two seconds? Like. Uh, I think, you know, be it maybe a timer for how long someone's actually viewed, not that that's like externally visible, like it's gonna just like start a countdown uh, clock when you when you scroll past things, but but there's different ways to kind of measure engagement. And, and I think that honestly, finding those new connections is gonna be what either makes or breaks this this platform. And at least if, if that's the goal, then I think that's the right way to approach things. What is your favorite part of Greenery? Like what part of it were you the most passionate about? What kind of like s screams like your personality into it? You know, I, I rolled out a feature that I really liked um, that I had on my profile from the beginning, which was kind of these custom aspect ratios for, for displaying stuff on your profile, just to add that extra layer of customization. Which I love, by the way. That's probably my favorite part of the platform. I'm a panoramic yeah. guy and I love that. Exactly, it was, it was really nice to see things how people intended them originally to be, to be shown. And I put that out there, I just, you know, I pushed that update and I told people, hey, this is how you do it. And then everyone started sending me images of how their profile looked now. And like that to me is the most rewarding thing is just to see how people are using this, this platform that I just put out there to, to make it something that is their own now. That's awesome. And what are you looking forward to most in terms of like either your goals with the platform or just for yourself as a person? Uh, I'd say like goals for the platform. And you know, we, we touched on this a little bit, but, uh, I think Granary, when it is established, can support a larger photography community. And if that extends outside of film and includes digital, then that's wonderful. But Granary will always be a film specific platform. And, and in that respect, I hope that we entice people to come try film. Like I know it's, it can be a, you know, a, a very um, 
time consuming, it can be an expensive medium, but we do it because we love it. We, we get a lot out of taking those photos and maybe we can convince people to try it out. Maybe we can lower that learning curve. Maybe we can connect people in, in new ways. And, and honestly, if that's the, the goal that I can achieve, then I, I've done what I've set out to do. Amazing. Thank you for all your answers. We're going to jump into the fan questions right now. All right, so the number one question that I got, over 130 people asked, when is the iOS app coming out? Okay, um, there is an iOS and an Android app. There is an open beta in the description below. Ranking from one to three, like a Fuji Canon. Like a Fuji Canon. So like a number one. All right, that's all I need to know. <laughs> What's the greatest of all time film? What's the goat film? I'm a fan of Port uh, Portrait 800. Ah, the okay. Recipes. Is he willing to hashtag free the nipple for artistic reasons on Greenery? Yeah, of course. Will Greenery Plus ever end? I hope not. Will you add a parallel or something similar to Instagram stories on Greenery? I think so. Aside from stories, will there ever be videos on Greenery? No direct posts, probably. I like that answer. Is there a place in the future where we can request app features or suggestions? Yeah, I intend to build that soon. Will you ever plan to have ads on Granary? I hope not. Will there ever be a digital specific photo section? There could be. I'm thinking sensory instead of Granary. Hmm, I like that. Interesting one. Will there ever be an Easter egg hidden menu which lets you snipe eBay auctions? We'll have our own auctions. All right, Kyle, it was an absolute pleasure to hang out with you and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you to really get to know your intent with the platform and your goals for it because, yeah, like my original video, because I knew there was only one person behind it, felt it was a little bit unfair and some of the viewers back home may have more empathy for how much work goes into such a task as building a new photo sharing social media platform. So where can people find you on social media? Like roll out the red carpet right here. Go ahead and tell them. Uh, Granary.app uh, is the website at Granary app on Instagram is where I do most of my communications. And I mean, uh, I'm also lurking on Reddit and uh, you know, I'll say hi if you, I'll try to, there's a lot of people, but. Absolutely. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any more comments for Kyle, leave it in the section down below, comment section down below, and he might answer, he might not. Whatever it is, DM him on Instagram, but we will see you in the next video. Peace.